Welcome to the Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. For group exercise junkies and enthusiastic classgoers, we'll explore and uncover authentic, thought-provoking, and heartwarming industry education and inspiration from entertaining, badass fitness pros. And now your host, creator of Warrior Rhythm, Warrior Strength, Warrior Combat, Warrior Revolution, and Warrior Kids Group Fitness Brands, Ellen DeWord. Here we grow. Hey, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for being here for 49 weeks in a row. We have never missed a Monday, and I'm really proud of myself. I'm super grateful for you uh, that we have created a little bit of a community and have something going here. We have something going, and I committed to this podcast with you for a year, and we're almost at that year, and I don't know. I'm not sure yet because when I commit, I commit hard, (laughs) but you know, maybe I'll commit to another year. I certainly have appreciated the response that you've given and I've enjoyed, you know, taking um, things I've learned from, you know, my experiences and from my failures and from my successes and sharing that with you. And I've loved learning from alongside you. I've loved learning from the various incredible guests we have had on the show. Speaking of which Dane's episode last week was phenomenal. If you missed it, catch it on the rewind. So I'm actually podcasting tonight to you from my living room because wah, 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 I'm redoing this episode. It was so good. This episode was so good. And I podcasted. I saved it. Huh. I'm yawning because it's late. That's part of the story. I've been in Seattle all weekend. I just had the most incredible weekend in Seattle doing a Warrior Rhythm instructor training and a Warrior Roots um, pop-up class. And anyway, Seattle is it's about six hours north of me. Anyway, I just got home. It's late. I'm tired and it's about to be a new week. And I'm checking, I'm listening back. I play back. I listen back to my episodes always. And there are some uh, glitches in the audio where the sound drops out. And I don't know why that happened, but here I am redoing it. <laughs> it was a good episode. So here we go. Let's hope I can do it justice the second time around. I'm here today to talk to you about why you should consider implementing more of a coaching style to your classes, at least some of the time, especially if you teach a lot. Now, if you're just teaching a couple classes a week or whatever, then, you know, maybe not so much. Maybe just listen to this episode and clock it for when you have a more robust or if you ever have a more robust schedule on your plate. But for those of you that teach a lot, this is such a good episode for you. It's such, it's, it's such a good, um, it's, it's going to be such a good, hopefully, um, course correct for you. And it's it's something that I've been personally working on myself as an instructor because I teach right now, I'm going to be full transparency. Maybe this is my confession right away, right out of the gates. I am teaching too much right now. I'm teaching too much. Are you ready for this? I'm actually embarrassed to say it. I don't have any days off. I teach seven days a week. I teach one to three classes a day. It's too much. I don't need to go into the why with you. It's not really important, but for it was, it is for a reason and just for a season. And that season is actually about to change. So in November, I, my schedule, I I should have a nice, nice couple of days off and things should lighten up a little bit, but there was a reason. And for a season, I have been teaching seven days a week one to three classes a day. And honestly, that's a lot. It's a little too much. So I've been working on getting more out of my comfort zone and doing a little bit more coaching. And when I say coaching, I mean that I'm not doing the workout. 
I mean, I'm not doing portions of the workout. I'm using that time to get off the stage, get out into the room more than I normally do. I mean, I've always done some of that, but to, 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 to connect and whatnot for others. So number one, number one reason that applying a coaching approach is beneficial to you is that, and this is kind of two different points in one, so that you're not over training. Also, it's kind of the same point, but a little bit different. So that you avoid the appearance of overtraining. People know my schedule. I have an email list. I send a weekly newsletter to everyone that takes my classes, whether online or in person. I have a Facebook community of people that take my classes, whether online or in person. And of course, I post my full schedule. So people know that I don't have any days off right now. And is that health? I don't think that's healthy. I don't think that's a healthy look. And so I want them to see that I'm taking care of my body and my mind and my spirit and that I'm not overdoing things. And so A, I'm not overtraining. B, I'm showing that I'm not overtraining. I wouldn't want a student of mine to think they needed to take multiple classes a day. And I wouldn't want a student of mine to think that they needed to to take a class seven days a week either. So by me taking a slightly more coaching approach is show is good role modeling for them. If someone's doing a bunch of classes a day, seven days a week, it they're probably running from some demons in their life. Like it's not necessarily a healthy, healthy thing. So that's point number one. Point number two is if you apply more of a coaching style, then it shows that you're not there just for your personal workout. Like you're not there just to get paid to work out. You know how some people say that or think that or assume that it really demonstrates that you are there for their workout, for their experience. Number two, it shows it's not about you. Number three, it increases your ability to have a meaningful, a more meaningful one-on-one personal connection with your students. It allows you to pay better compliments to them. It allows you to pay more attention to them. It allows you to help correct them a little more. How's that? How's that feeling for you? What if you tried to do it like this? How about we straighten your back a little bit more right here? Now, what if we spread spread your finger, fingers apart a little bit wider here? Let's drop the chest. Just Let's lift the chest just a little bit more. Drop the hips just a little bit deeper. Wow, you look so good. That's it. That's right. You got it. Beautiful. It increases your ability to have a meaningful one-on-one connection. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you for a while. It's so good to see you during the workout to have that kind of meaningful connection. Number four, it's a power move to spend some time coaching your class. Some time. Now, I don't mean you're just like a robot sitting on the stage uh, barking orders. It's super interactive. You're demonstrating everything, multiple levels, lots of different options to do the movements, but then you get out of the center of the room. You get off of the stage and you walk through your class. I literally, in my notes for this podcast, I put a bolt emoji, you know, that yellow lightning bolt emoji. I put the bolt emoji next to this bullet point. It's a power move. You know, it's human nature. You know, when someone, if like an instructor were to walk by you, or if you're at a conference and a presenter walks by you, 
or you're taking another instructor's class and they walk by you. It's human nature. If you're doing a push up, you go an inch deeper. <laughs> you just check your alignment just a little bit more. It's what we do. We're like hardwired to want to impress and look good and and do it right and receive praise. And so when an instructor walks by and you're working out or say it's a cycle class and they walk by and you're in the middle of a sprint, you can't tell me you don't sprint just a little bit harder. That's what we do. That's what we do. It's powerful. It's a literal energy shift in the room. Think lightning bolt emoji. Think about you sending shock waves of energy and that that motivate in this super intangible way people to work harder just because you walked by and really watched them. It's a power move is point number four. Point number five, it adds drama and entertainment. I like to think about boring classes. Can you guys hear Tootie, my cat, my bangle cat, Tooters? She's got a lot to say because she hasn't seen me for two days. So she might be chatting with us on this episode. Drama and entertainment. Think about a class that's boring. Instructors monotone. And they don't really, they just sit in the middle of the front of the room or middle of the stage and they never get off the stage. But the second they step off the stage, it's like, whoa, what's happening? Where's she going? Where's he going? Where are they going? What are they doing? What are they going to do? Are they coming my way? Are they going that way? Are they going to go turn the lights off? What are they doing? Are they going to do a dance break? (laughs) It adds some entertainment and drama factor. Number six, longevity. We want to be in this for the long haul. I know we do. We want to teach as long as we can. We want our bodies to not break down on us. And truly coaching your classes just a little bit more can give you a longer lifespan in this industry, doing what you love so much and allowing you to change more lives for longer. Number, where are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just kidding. (laughs) Seven, eight is, oh, no, that must be seven. One, overtraining. Two, it's not about you. Three, better one-on-one connection. Four, power move. Five, drama and entertainment. Six, longevity. Seven, allows you to keep making money, 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 money. It allows you to teach more classes like I'm having to do right now. And I'm just, yeah, it's, it it was a strategic move for me to bring more of my formats into the YMCA. And in doing so, um, I took on some extra stuff. And it because I have been working on honing the skill, it's allowed me to do it. And 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 also allows me to make a little more money. It allows you to make more money. You can teach more classes. And finally, number eight, it gives you bragging rights. <laughs> Not that you would ever brag out loud or brag to anyone, but it allows you to have bragging rights to yourself. And the reason I say that is because it's an upskill. The, the courage to lean into more of a coaching style is a harder skill. I know it sounds funny, but it's easy to hide behind a workout. It's easy to stay in your little comfort zone, in your bubble, at the front of the room. To get out of that bubble and to penetrate the actual space takes a lot of guts and does take greater skill. It also takes more interpersonal skill. It takes more 
uh, emotional intelligence, how to read your room, who's okay with you going right up face to face with them in high knees and trying to challenge them to go faster, looking them dead in the eyes. And who would not be, un- who would not maybe be as receptive to that kind of, you know, intimacy, that kind of closeness and proximity who, who would rather like, who wants your attention, but would rather maybe you come alongside of them instead of face to face, looking them in the eyes, but maybe post up next to them and do a mountain climber next to them to encourage them to work a little harder, maybe. Or maybe there's a group of people in the corner of the room and you just kind of come into that general vicinity, but you can all feel each other's energy in that corner of the room. It's a harder skill. You're reading the room. You're getting a little bit more personal with people. It's an upskill. Brag about it to yourself, (laughs) to yourself. How do you do it? You just practice. You take a section, a song, a part of the workout, and you practice getting out into the room. And that's your homework. If this is a new concept for you, something you really don't do, try it. Your next class, try it one time for just one minute. Just get out into the room for one minute. And just like a muscle that you flex, it gets easier and easier and easier and more and more and more comfortable. Now, fine print the modality or style that you teach does impact how easy it is to to go out into the room and coach more. Certain styles of class, like a step aerobics class, for example, or my warrior rhythm class is another example. It's, It's really beneficial for the students to see you and to watch you and have like um, um, the visual learners particularly, and because the the movements are coming so fast and furious, uh, it can be uh, it can be confusing for them if you get out into the room and walk around. But some formats like weightlifting, boot camp, hit, hit style, cycling, yoga. Um, y- there's really a lot of there's really a lot of room to do that. So the the style of class you teach does impact the ability and the ease in which you can work on, you know, flexing this this uh, this muscle. So let's quickly recap. Why should you consider adopting? more of a coaching approach to your classes because it shows you're not overtraining and it actually just keeps you from overtraining. It shows that it's not about you. It shows it shows non-verbally that you are passionate about their workout, that that's your priority. It increases your ability to have a one-on-one meaningful intimate connection and allows you to give more correction and more compliments. It's a power move, a bolt of lightning, electric energy shift that is in the palm of your hands. It adds drama and entertainment. It'll keep you in this industry longer. It will allow you to make more money And it's an upskill, so you can brag about it to yourself. (laughs) And once again, your homework is to, to practice. Practice this week in your classes. I would love to hear how it goes. I would love to hear any tips and tricks that you have about coaching. What are your thoughts? I'm going to leave you with a confession, and it's not really about me. (laughs) It's about one of my master trainers, Angel Balance. She listens to this podcast. So right about now she's like, what? (laughs) 
Uh, she listens to this podcast. She was our master trainer of the year last year. She lives in Dallas, Texas, and we have gone to a conference in Dallas, Texas, the last, I think four years, maybe three. And this year she presented warrior strength. And I was on stage with her as her backup dancer. It was so cool. And we, you know, we get on, we get on stage and, you know, um, she starts, she opens up the workout and I'm next to her sort of like, you know, my, my mat's a couple feet away from her and we're doing the warm up. And I was like, Oh, I should have told her she needs to get off the stage. Like I should have told her she should do that a couple of times during this workout. Darn it. Like, darn it. I should have coached her that way. This was her first time presenting at a major, major conference. It's a big deal. And The next section was mobility. We always go into mobility work uh, in our um, warrior strength classes after the warm up, before we get crazy with (laughs) the intensity. And um, we were doing this like we were doing a couple moves, sort of a combination of a couple moves where you're doing like a diving down dog push up into like a down dog diagonal reach under move. And so my point is that we were like going upside down a lot. And I was like, oh, because I was thinking like when we get into like the thick of things, when things start to get hard in this workout, that's when she should go out there and work the room and work the floor. And so I was like, oh, when we go down into this like down dog, we rock back into it. I'm going to like say it to her because I'm not wearing a mic and no one will be able to see my mouth and no one will be able to hear me, but her, because I'm right next to her, but there's music blaring. And so... I go back, we go back and I get ready to say it. And we go into this diving down dog thing. And I'm like, where'd she go? Where's Angel? I was just going to whisper to her. (laughs) She was gone. She was in the room. She was working the floor. I don't know that that's a confession. It's maybe more of a story. It's not really a confession. I guess my confession was at the beginning where I said, I'm teaching too much right now and have no days off. But my, um, my story, I guess it's just a story is that I was going to give my master trainer a little, uh, presenter tip and I didn't need to cause she was way ahead of me. So anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Have an awesome week. Thank you for hanging out with me on this episode redo. And I will catch you next week on Monday for episode 50. Have a nice week, everybody. Thank you so much for loving the show, for sharing the show, for rating the show. Thank you for joining in on the Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. If you're interested in becoming a warrior instructor, go to warriorinstructors.com. But if you want more and found this episode amazing, please give us a rating. And with a simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. So remember, be brave, be bold, be blessed. And above all, listen, learn, love.